Nissan India has been betting on the Magnite for a really long time now and even though the X-Tail was launched a couple of months ago, the Magnite is still going to be the brand's bread and butter. This here is the facelifted car and before any of you say that no, nothing seems to be new, the face has been lifted slightly. So let me show you what's new about this car. Now on the face of it, not much has changed on this facelifted Magnite. The headlights look just as sharp as I remember. This grille though is all new, it's a much bigger grille, it's blacked out, looks really cool. These chrome elements though I'm not so sure about, they look a little tacky but nevertheless the bumpers are new and the skid plate looks a lot more SUV-ish than the outgoing one. The wheels as well, all new and this paint, it's called Sunrise Copper Orange. I have a few mixed feelings about it but it does shine well under the bright sun. The sun has updated the tail lamps as well and that appears to be the most comprehensive of the upgrades on the exterior. To be fair, Nissan didn't really need to change much about the Magnite. It might be the same design from 2021, but it still looks fresh enough for 2024. But again, it's been a long time and I wish Nissan would have put a bit more effort as calling this a facelift seems like an over-exaggeration. Now something I like about this Magnite is if you have the key in your pocket, and you go close to the car, it will unlock itself. Same as when you get out and you move away, it will lock itself. That's something we don't find at cars at this price point, but it's here. Now get inside and you will notice that the layout has not changed. Everything is where it was in the pre-facelift Magnite, but Nissan has addressed one key point and that is the quality of materials used. We as journalists and even customers did not like the plastic materials used across the dash. Nissan has addressed that and now they're giving you leather over here on the dash, on the doors, even over here. Now this portion earlier was just an armrest, there was no storage. Nissan has addressed that as well and now you get storage as well. The seats are new as well, they match the dashboard, they feel nice, they're good support, really comfortable. Now the rest of the equipment is pretty much the same. You get some new features but this infotainment screen is the same 8 inch unit. It works pretty well, it's pretty fast but I wish Nissan would have made it slightly bigger because you have more area over here which is just blacked out, could have been a bigger screen. Digital instrument cluster, well the earlier one, the graphics were slightly older, they've updated that, it's much more crisp now. The Steering wheel buttons, I like the fact that there are no dead buttons on the steering wheel, all the buttons are usable, so that's a really nice touch. And the rest of the cabin is pretty nice. I only have one take and that was if Nissan could have given a sunroof on the top variants at least. In terms of features though, the Magnet is still one of the most bang for your buck vehicles you can buy. You get full LED projector headlamps, LED fog lamps, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, a cooled glove box, ambient lighting, a PM2.5 air filter, a JBL sound system with 6 speakers, a 336 litre boot capacity and a lot more. 6 airbags, hill start assist, a 360 degree camera, seat belt reminders for all seats, ABS with EBD, a tyre pressure monitoring system are just a few of the safety features on board. So under the bonnet, the 1 litre turbo petrol with 100 PS and 160 Nm continues to hold its place. You also get the option of a naturally aspirated unit with lesser performance, but I think this turbo is the way to go. Now this car is mated to the CVT transmission and it feels pretty good in stop and go traffic. The engine doesn't feel as underpowered as you would think and even if you have to make quick manoeuvres in busy traffic, the unit responds pretty well. Now you could argue that it isn't as zippy as other competitors but it gets the job done. Even on the highway, the engine doesn't lack juice. All you gotta do is switch into sport mode which is this button on the gear stick and that livens up the engine and the gas pedal and you will be pretty satisfied with the way the car delivers. Something that leaves me wanting more are the brakes and I say more as in a lot more. The brakes aren't as grabby as I would want it to be and I have found myself in a few tricky positions while driving around the city. 
I just wish they had a little more stopping power and a little more feel to it. One of the strongest points of the pre-facelift Magnite was its ride quality. That aspect has been carried over to this updated car, if not bettered it. On the highway, it feels relaxed and effortless, while in the city, it does an exceptional job dealing with potholes, much better than cars at this price point at least. There are a few vibrations that go around the cabin, but that's not something I would hold up against the Magnite. The Nissan Magnite has always been a great deal. Competition in this segment is strong and the Magnite doesn't get you everything that other sub 4 meter SUVs will at a slight premium. But when it comes to getting your money's worth, the Nissan is still possibly the most value for money car that you could get your hands on if that's what you're looking for.